Hey guys, good evening. This is Alejandro Narbona on behalf of Inglés Corporativo. Welcome to another day in paradise, people. How's it going? All good? Good. Was your Thursday okay? I'm good. 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 All right. This is a little Friday. So, remember, no classes yeah. tomorrow. So, let's go ahead and give the last sprint for this week. Give me week. five. <laughs> give me five. Yeah. So you get to rest Friday, Saturday, and Monday. All right, my man. You you know the drill. What was yesterday's topic? Who can tell me that? It's about the um, in in the indirect uh, questions. That's right, indirect questions. Um, uh, what do you know about indirect questions? Three type. There are three 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 types. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is the verb. Mm -hmm. The second one is do or did, and the last one uh, with can. Nice. Emer, right? Yeah. Okay. Good job. That's exactly it. Um, I need one example of each from volunteers. Last uh, Next week, I'm not going to ask for volunteers, guys. So <laughs> next week, I'm going to choose people to give me examples. So... You might want to keep an eye on, on the material. Uh-huh. Um, who can give me an example with verb to be? Um, for example, can, uh, can you tell me where the, um, where's the... Uh, bank branch near here ah. where is the nearest uh, branch bank near here okay mm -hmm. and what ha what do we need to have at the end the bird ah, had the bird to mm -hmm. be yes. exactly could you tell me where the nearest bank is yes like good <laughs> good 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 great job sir great job um, that was, give me a second, because I got lost. Who was that? that? David? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, sometimes, because I just see names, sometimes I don't know who's talking, so that's why sometimes I ask for the cameras, but don't worry about it. You don't have to turn it on. And my camera doesn't work. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. It's okay. All right. So that's a good example would be. I need someone to give me an example with do, please. Aha, uh -huh, this is a dead silence. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, Romulo. Me, how often do the buses leave? Do, do, the, do the buses leave? No. Aha, uh -huh, that's a direct question. How often do? The bus is leave. Yes, yes, uh huh. And the indirect? Uh, can you tell me how, how often the bus is leave? Simple as that. You eliminate the auxiliary do. Great job. Yes, Excellent. And the last one that we covered was with can, right? <coughs> mm -hmm. Would you mind giving me an example? Come on, do just you know, one. Mm -hmm. Do you know where I can take my lunch? Great, 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 great. So thank you, David. Thank you, Emer, and thank you, Romulo. I appreciate your participation. Good job. Satisfied with your answers. Thank you. Okay, people. So let's do whatever we came here to do right now. We're going to be working with a new topic. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Nice. So let's go ahead and practice our pronunciation a little bit. Here. Say it with me, please. Lesson objective. Lesson objective. Lesson objective. Build your English. I got all messed up. Let's take two. Build your English language skills with this lesson on adjectives and nouns. 
Build your English language By the end of this class, you'll learn how to express your opinions about houses and apartments. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to express your opinions about houses and apartments. Good. Now, listen to the pronunciation of the plural. Houses. 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 Apartments. 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 There are three different types of pronunciation of plural endings. If they finish with vibration, you're going to use a little z. 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 If they house. finish with air, like house, you're going to say, how is this? Is. How is this? Is. Is. And if they finish house. with explosion, like apartment, you're going to say apartment. 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 If you're, apartment. Mm -hmm. if you're apartment. interested about the topic, go ahead and review it. Plural, um, plural endings. I think I have a video about that. I can remember. But you can look for any video online. It's going to help you a lot on the pronunciation. Let's continue. Additionally, 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 you'll be able to describe your house or apartment in English. You will be able to describe your house or apartment in English. And use evaluating phrases such as Apartments for blah, 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 blah. Oh, this is another one. Look and use evaluating phrases such as apartments are too small for pets. And use evaluating phrases such as apartments are too small for pets. Mm -hmm. Here, apartments are too small. Apartments, apartments are, are too small. small. Hmm. I'm hearing a small. Now, uh, small. 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 How do you small. how do you small. pronounce? Oh, this is the incorrect one. This is the one I want. How do you pronounce this name in Spanish? Sara. 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 Sofia. 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 Sapo. Exactly. Sapo. Now, there is a common confusion here with the letter S. The name of the letter is S. S. But the sound, like in Spanish, is S. S. Mm -hmm. So I heard many people said too es small. Too es small. ¿Por qué pasa esto? Confundimos el nombre de la palabra y esto es de la letra, perdón, súper común en nosotros que aprendemos inglés como segundo idioma. Decimos es small, pero tendríamos que decirlo igual que en español. En español no decimos es Sara, no es, es Sofía. Mira ese es sapo, nada. Así que lo vamos a decir igualito que en español. Small. 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 Exacto. Small. Small. There you go. Sin Small. E. Y cada vez que vean esto, acuérdense del esapo o de la esara. Esapo. Esarita. Ajá, mira, ya, ya le llamaste la esara. Sí, fíjate, la e Sofía le llamó. Ok, so, Sara, Sofía, Small. All right. Small. Let's continue. Houses are too expensive. Houses, 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 houses are, too too expensive. are too expensive. Too expensive. Uh -huh. Too expensive. Or houses cost too much money. Oh, houses, houses, houses cost too much money. Much money. Money. Yeah. money. So right now we'll be able to pretty much evaluate things with adjectives and also with nouns. All right. Do you know what an adjective is, by the way? Qualificated. Okay. 
describing an answer. Describing. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something different then. Yes. Do you know? That modifies the verb. Mm -hmm. Good. Almost there. Almost, almost. Do you know what is a noun? Yes. What is it? Plus. Mm. And nouns. Mm -hmm. How to explain is always the nouns is before the adjective, but is mm, the, it's the opposite. Bye, guys. The opposite. It's the opposite. Yes. Uh -huh, it's the the opposite. adjective describe the nouns. Exactly. But what, what is a noun? ¿Qué es un noun? Ah, it's a uh, person, things. Just person, place, things. Person, place. things, places. Un volado. So, <laughs> there you go. So, guys, <laughs> this is very important so you can understand the structure. Now, um, believe it or not, I have several years teaching English and I didn't know that sustantivo in Spanish is the name of something. No sabía eso, aparte, a pesar de que es mi lengua, mi lengua materna. Sustantivo, What? para los que no sabían, como yo, hace un par de semanas, <laughs> es el nombre de algo. Mesa, really? table, car. I didn't know. Right? And yes, I graduated. <laughs> but, but I didn't know. <laughs> so the thing is this. It's a joke. No, it's not a joke. I was helping. Um, I was helping one of the kids in the house to to do their homework, and I was sustantivo. What the hell is that? <laughs> but anyways, a noun is a sustantivo. A noun is a word that names something. Okay. About you talking. Whatever you're talking about, Sergio, couch, fan, cell phone, teacher, El Salvador. All of those are nouns. So, un noun es el nombre de algo. Es la palabra que le da el nombre a algo. All right? So, now that we understand what a noun is, an adjective is a word that describes a noun. Okay? So, it is very important that you understand what an adjective is for this lesson. So, how can you describe this phone? Large, it's black, 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 uh -huh. large, black phone, black phone, mm -hmm. slim, slim phone, slim. yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. rectangular, rectangular phone, that's right, cheap phone, cheap. barato, cheap phone, etc. Um, well, I think you got the point, right? How can you describe this? I can hear. I don't know if you can see it. Like a Katrina. Oh. How, how would you describe this? What, a, what is this? I don't know what is this. It's a piece of decoration. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can describe it. It's it's a little heavy. It's a little heavy. Uh -huh. It's black. It's black. So any word. Uh -huh. With a skeleton. Okay, skeleton. Yeah, we can use a skeleton. For some of you, this is nice. For some of you, this is ugly. And it's okay. It's a description. All right? So everything that we are going to use right now Adjectives are going to be words that describe a noun. Okay? Is that clear? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. And remember, adjectives always go before the noun. Like you said, black phone. In Spanish, is the different, is the opposite. We say teléfono negro. El adjetivo va después. Pero en inglés, como muchas cosas, son medio revesados, le damos vuelta. Primero va el color, material, función, etc. Um, edad, son otras cosas que podemos ocupar. Black phone, new phone, old phone, cheap phone. This is the order. Yes. Old man. 
Yes. The adjectives go before the noun they are describing. Oh, what a handsome guy. Handsome. Qué guapetón. Oh, what a beautiful girl. Qué mujer más bonita. Right? So the adjective in English is before the noun. Now we have this in mind. Ahora que tenemos esto en mente, let's go ahead and watch this video so you can understand a little bit more. But teacher, mm -hmm. but you use uh, an order. For example, you use first the color or the eyes. Yes, yes. Now, I can't remember the, the exact order, but I do know that um, the function is last. For example, running shoes. Then you have material, then you have color, then you have age, then you have origin. I can't remember the exact order, but we can look for it. Can you see what I'm looking for on, on Google? Yes. Okay, adjectives order. Again, this is just to answer a question. I'm not gonna get into this topic because you know we are doing something else. But yes, I like to show you this. Give me a second. Order of adjectives. Let's go ahead and click the first one. You got number. I can't remember the exact order. It is not going to be common for you to use them all. They are like nine, if I'm not mistaken. Give me a second. Okay, so they are eight. First, you have quantity of number. Then we have quality or opinion, size, age, shape, color, proper adjective, place of origin, material. Some of this can be separate. Material, origin, can be separate uh, um, categories. And then you have purpose. Let's see if we have an example. Give me a sec. Again, this is not part of the class, just for you to have an idea of it. This is a quantity. I have three opinion, ugly, right? Ugly is an opinion. What is ugly for someone might be beautiful for someone else. So it's an opinion or quality. Size, big, old, um, circular, brown, uh -huh. circular. brown, Running, oh, reading, shape, glasses. So this is pretty much the order. As you can see, you're never going to use them like all of them. I have three ugly, big, or all circular brown reading glasses. Tengo tres feo, grande, viejo, circulares, cafés, lentes para leer. So, thank you. You're welcome. Informas, uh, general knowledge, right? General knowledge. So let's go back to this. And let's go ahead and watch the video. Mute your mics and listen to it, please. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you will be able to give your opinion about houses and apartments. Additionally, you'll be able to evaluate your own house and apartment. For example, you'll be able to make the following statements. Apartments are too small for pets, but houses are too expensive. Houses cost too much money. Before I talk about the grammar involved in this particular class, what I would like to do now is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. We will listen to a few people talk about their opinions on houses and apartments. Your task is to listen carefully and answer a couple of questions that I'll have for you at the end of the audio program. Apartments are too small for pets. 
Apartments aren't big enough for families. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Houses cost too much money. Houses don't have enough closet space. Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Let me present some structure now. The first thing that I would like to do is to show you how to make evaluations using adjectives. And particularly, we're going to learn how to use the words enough and to. After that, we're going to make evaluations, but this time we're going to use nouns. And at the same time, we're also going to use the words enough and also to. First of all, what are adjectives? Well, adjectives are those words that describe nouns. So they describe people, places, or things. Since we're talking about evaluating houses and apartments, what we want to do is we want to think about some of those adjectives that we might use to evaluate a house or an apartment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a lot of those words here. And then what I would like for you to do is to uh, memorize this and uh, maybe study them if you're not familiar with them. So for example, we have the adjectives comfortable, convenient, dangerous, dark, bright, expensive, huge, small, inconvenient, modern, noisy, private, quiet, safe, small, spacious. And I'm pretty sure you can think of many. So let me present some structure at this time on how to make sense of this evaluation that you see there towards the left. Apartments aren't big enough for families. So in order for us to make that particular evaluation, we can think of the following structure. So let me go ahead and write that now. Following this structure, we can see that we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we have apartments. This is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be in its negative form. Okay. And then, and then this is going to be followed by the adjective. So in this case, the adjective is big. Then this is going to be followed by enough. And then um, we're going to have some sort of complement here. So in this case, it happens to be families, right? So if we look at the pattern, we have a subject. I'm going to go ahead and follow the colors so that we can see what's happening there. That's in black. There we go. So we can see that the subject is apartments. Then this is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be the verb to be in its negative form. After that, we're going to have some sort of adjective. And then it's going to follow the word enough. And then we're going to include um, some sort of complement, if you will. So if we think about other evaluations that we can say about apartments, either apartments or homes, then we can say the following. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, because the next evaluation is going to be quite similar. So we can say the following. Apartments aren't, and so I'm going to change the adjective here. So I'm going to say aren't spacious enough for families. Okay. And let's do one more. Uh, we can also say that apartments aren't, and I'm going to change the adjective now. I'm going to say apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. The next thing that I would like to do is to make sense of that second evaluation that you see there at the bottom. Now, using the word to. And so what I want you to notice is the following, that we're just going to have different ways of evaluating things. And so there isn't just one way to do it. There are many different ways. So in this case, we're going to use this expression. And I want you to notice what's going to change. So I want you to think about what is the opposite of big? Well, the opposite of big, we can, we can think of that as being small, right? So in this case, I want you to notice what, what's going to change. So in this case, I'm going to say apartments are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include two small 
so the only thing that changed is that I'm no longer using the bird to be in its negative form, but now I'm using it in its positive form. And then I'm including two plus the adjective small, and I'm saying for families. So what I want you to notice is that these two sentences, these two evaluations are the same thing. The only thing is that I'm expressing them in different ways. The next thing that I would like to do now is to show you how to make evaluations. But now we're going to talk about making evaluations using nouns. And a couple of things will change. And so let me present the formula at this time. And I'm going to show you what kind of things will change. Well, first of all, um, similar to making evaluations with adjectives, we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we're going to say apartments. Okay. That's going to follow a verb. In this case, it's no longer the verb to be. So that's the first thing that changes. We're no longer using the verb to be. So in this case, we're using any other kind of verb. In this case, it happens to be that that's on a negative. So we, we're going to say don't have. That's uh, the verb is on its negative form. And then this follows enough. So opposite from adjectives where we would include the adjective first, when we make evaluations using nouns, we no longer use the adjective first. We're going to include enough and then we're going to include the noun. So let me give an example here. Don't have enough. And then uh, whatever um, noun that we want to include. So in this case, don't have enough parking spaces. Okay. Uh, so the noun is parking spaces. And then you can think of a complement, if you will. So you can include something else there. So for example, uh, what could that be? Don't have enough parking spaces for people, right? That could be the complement. But in this case, the noun is parking spaces. And quickly, I want to talk about nouns. So what are nouns? What are some of the nouns that we can think about when we are um, you know, thinking about making evaluations of apartments and houses. Well, uh, we can think of things like parking spaces, as you can see there. We can think of things like closet space, right? We can think of things like privacy. And of course, we can think of things like money, if you will, right? So these kind of things are nouns that we can think of. So we can say the following. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments don't have enough closet space. Apartments don't have enough privacy. And the last example that I would like to make is how to use to. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this I'm going to take that example there. Houses, this follows the verse, so that continues to be the same. We are no longer going to include the word enough. So in this case, we're going to use too much money, right? Houses cost too much money. So if we can think of this, I'm going to follow the pattern there. Houses cost, that follows the verb. And then in this case, I want you to notice what happened. So we include too much money. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to evaluate your house or apartment. It depends on where you live, right? And I want you to evaluate your house or apartment using adjectives, such as the ones that are here. And of course, following the formula that I presented to you earlier today. And I also want you to evaluate your house or apartment using nouns. So uh, once again, using the formula that I'm presenting to you today. And then of course, you're going to follow this formula. So I want you to make as many examples as you possibly can. The idea is to practice as much as possible. All right, guys. So after 10 minutes and 20 seconds, we have finished the video. So um, how do you find this topic? Do you find it complicated? Small, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, I want you to notice. Do you find this complicated? ¿Les parece complicado este tema? No. ¿No? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, why do I feel like no? 
Okay. Kind of, kind of fizzy. Okay, nice. So, for those of you who don't really get it, we're going to be evaluating things. Here we have apartments aren't big enough for families. All right? Los apartamentos no son lo suficientemente grandes para familias. Okay? Now, apartments are too small uh, for pets. Too, maybe in the water, in the Los apartamentos son demasiado pequeños para mascotas. So, lo que estamos haciendo aquí es evaluando. Prácticamente dando una opinión, vea. Si no, dejan muy chiquitos los volados para tener un montón de animales. So, that's what we use. So, acá lo que pueden hacer es cambiar el sujeto. Houses, cars, no son que, no son lo suficientemente pequeños para que quepan en un parqueo, las camionetas. Um, quiero ver los, um, los grandaneses son demasiado grandes para un apartamento, etc. So, aquí están ocupando adjectives. Aquí están ocupando nouns. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Los apartamentos no tienen, aquí va cualquier otro verbo que no sea el to be, suficiente que. Y aquí viene el noun. Uh -huh. y, y pueden ser también en afirmativo, ¿verdad? Apartments have enough parking space. Houses sure. cost too much money. I'll, I'll be right there in a minute. Houses cost too much money. Las casas cuestan demasiado que dinero. Um, mis calcetines tienen demasiados hoyos. My socks have too many holes. Many Por ejemplo, holes. pueden hablar de lo que quieran. Solo asegúrense de cambiar el sujeto, el verbo y el noun. Go ahead. Do you have any questions? Yeah, in the example, and the apartments don't have enough parking space. Uh, and, uh -huh. and which word is uh, the, the adjective? Parking space? Oh, or is it the compliment? No. Here, okay. give me a second. I'm going to sneeze. Just one moment. Sorry, I was sneezing. Okay. Um, parking spaces is enough. Is the noun. Is the noun. Mm -hmm. Si ustedes se fijan acá, aquí va el noun. Por eso les dije que es un poco, a veces en chivola un poquito. Lo que tienen que ustedes aprender a hacer es a reemplazar. Sujeto, el aren't, dejémoslo así en negativo. Aquí va el, el, el adjective. El enough lo dejamos no. ahí, cambiamos el complemento. Pero no veo nada, solo veo la página del de, video. No veo lo que está escribiendo. No, no estoy escribiendo nada, estoy poniendo un círculo ah, okay. acá. ¿Ven uh -huh. cuando estoy moviendo el cursor? Sí, oh. sí. Yes, yes. Good. Entonces acá... Y luego, nuevamente, si nosotros podemos identificar qué cosa es demasiado, ¿qué? Demasiado pequeño, demasiado feo, demasiado barato. Y aquí va el adjetivo. Ok. Uh -huh. Luego, cualquier cosa, don't, aquí lo dejamos. Podemos jugar con el verbo. No tienen, no pesan lo suficiente para. Y aquí está el noun. Estamos trabajando con nouns acá. Nouns. Uh -huh. Aquí está el noun, money. Entonces, si ustedes empiezan a identificar como la estructura y empiezan a, a saber, ah, este es el sujeto, aquí va sujeto, verbo, too much, si está en negrita, ahí déjenlo, es parte de la estructura. Too much uh -huh. is for uncountable, que no podemos contar, ya lo vimos. And too many is for countable. Si aquí fuera, digamos, cars, sería too many. My brother, veamos que es millonario el hombre, vea. My brother has too many cars. Y aquí va el now. Entonces, aquí estamos evaluando. Luego, aquí vamos a comparar. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Las casas no son, aquí ve el adjetivo, tan convenientes como los apartamentos. Motorcycles aren't as safe as cars. Um, Teacher, uh -huh. uh, we can use like 
replace like for us? Yes, but not right now. Because this is a double comparative, as, as. Es un comparativo doble. So, como yo siempre les aconsejo, no cambien la estructura hasta que ya esté sólida. Cuando ya esté sólida, podemos empezar a jugar con otras palabras. Ok. All right. So, las casas no son tan, tan convenientes como apartamentos. Ahora, houses, aquí va la afirmativa. Las casas son tan convenientes como apartamentos. Aquí va el adjetivo. ¿Me van entendiendo hasta el momento? Sí. Ok. Bien. Yeah. Now. And then, here, también estamos comparando. Si se fijan acá, no comparamos nada. Los apartamentos son muy grandes para las familias. ¿Es una evaluación o una opinión? Los apartamentos son demasiado pequeños o muy pequeños para las mascotas. Evaluación. Los apartamentos no tienen suficientes espacios de parqueo. Evaluación. No estamos comparando nada, pero aquí sí. Esto no es tan tal cosa como esto. ¿Ok? Aquí también comparamos. Apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Los apartamentos tienen... Aquí va cualquier verbo y aquí va solo el to be. Si se fijan, este cuadro es para to be, este cuadro es para cualquier verbo. Entonces, apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Los apartamentos tienen tantos que, aquí ve el noun. Cuatro. Espérense, antes que se me vaya, que le di play sin querer. Here. Just a moment. So, los apartamentos tienen tantos cuartos como las casas. Apartments don't, don't have as much privacy as houses. So, aquí tenemos lo que estamos comparando. Comparamos apartamentos con casas en ambos ejemplos. Acuérdense de no cambiar lo que está en negrita. Casas comparadas con apartamentos. Apartamentos. Uh -huh. So, sé que voy un poquito jalado con esto, pero es por el tiempo. Este recuadro es para el verbo to be. Este recuadro es para otros verbos. All right. Ya nos vamos a, ya vamos a poder practicar. This is verb used with to be. Used with other verbs. Okay. Do you guys have any questions so far? Hi, good evening. I have good a evening. question. Nice. Woo, uh, a question. Tell me. <laughs> What's the difference uh, when we use the word as in comparison mm -hmm. and then we use the word most than the other stuff? Um, most? Yes, uh, for, for example, uh, mm -hmm. my my house is most comfortable than yours, for example. Ah, okay. Those are normal comparatives. Esos son comparativos normales. So, por ejemplo, mm -hmm. my, my car is older than yours. Mi carro es más viejo que el tuyo. Es otro tipo de comparativo. Es el comparativo normal. Este es un double comparative. Porque tenemos el as, el as. Ah, ok, ok. Son diferentes estructuras. And ok, we, um, we can um, uh, what, um, Quiero ver, espérame. Uh -huh. Quiero ver si ya mandó la foto. I was going to send the screenshot. There you go. Thank you, David. Uh -huh. The other question. ¿Tenía otra pregunta? Oh, I, I, eh, sí. Go ahead. ¿Cómo voy a identificar cuando es, eh, se ocupa esta forma uh, cuando ocupo la otra? Porque, um, ¿cómo le puedo decir? Acá tenemos un comparativo doble. Estamos comparando casas con apartamentos. ¿Ok? Estamos comparando dos casas. Dos cosas diferentes. ¿Ok? Y con el comparativo normal, estamos comparando una cosa. Mi teléfono es más viejo que el tuyo. 
sea, estamos comparando dos cosas que son iguales. Ah, ok. Mi hermano okay. es más alto que el tuyo. Estamos comparando los hermanos. O sea, esos son comparative, un comparativo normal. Pero este, como mencionaba antes, estamos comparando dos cosas diferentes. Las casas son tan no son tan convenientes, en ese ejemplo, como los apartamentos. Estamos comparando dos cosas diferentes. Agua y aceite. ¿Estamos? Ah, ok. Thank uh -huh. you. You're welcome. All right, guys. So someone already sent this picture to the group. I want you to please try to give me examples on both. Necesito que cada una de las estructuras atender un par de ejemplos. And uh, for this, we're going to have eight minutes. Tenemos ocho minutos. So go ahead and accept the invite. When we come back, cuando regresemos, I'm going to be answering some questions. Tenemos cinco minutos para preguntas. Métanle, please. Accept the invite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tatiana, can you hear me? ¿Me escuchas? Okay, she's in. Ben Hyacin, all right. Mm, si quieren, bueno, si quieren, podemos mencionar. Primero vamos por evaluación de adjetivos y la persona dice un ejemplo y así para eh, abarcar las cuatro. Ok, está bien, está bien, está bien. Ok, mira. Okay, okay. If you want, give me an example using evaluation with adjectives. With adjectives. Uh, It's the first one in the, in the imagen. Yeah. Um, negative or positive? Um, positive. Positive, okay. Uh, the cars are so fast on the highway. The cars are so fast on the highway. Which one, which one are you using? Evaluation with adjectives? Um, fast? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, 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 La recomendación que les doy es que reemplacen. En vez de apartamentos, instead of apartments, look for something else. Cars, por ejemplo. Y luego déjenle, mm -hmm. aren't. Oh, no son qué. Ajá. Entonces, la magia de esto, guys, es que ustedes puedan, estas que son bastante estructuras bien cortas y con las cosas bien marcadas, aquí pueden empezar a reemplazar. Los carros no son qué. ¿Y para qué? Los carros no son lo, lo suficientes. Cheap. cheap enough for teenagers. Ya sacamos uno. Cars aren't cheap enough for teenagers. Okay. Entonces así, la, 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 la magia es empezar a, a reemplazar. En el otro, digamos que seguimos con cars. Cars are too, los carros son demasiado, ¿qué? Expensive. Muy bien, ¿para quién? Expensive. For, a single for a, person. For a Maybe. single person. For students, too. For students. Ajá, generalmente un estudiante, si no le pagan las cosas a los papás y no trabaja, <coughs> va a ser muy difícil que pueda mantener un vehículo. <laughs> Cars are too expensive for students. Y ahí van. Traten de reemplazar las pequeñas cositas, dejen lo que está en, en negro y continúen. Démosle, guys. Let me check another group. Follow my, my, my okay. lead. And I really hope I help you out. Okay. 
we can change uh, apartments. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Mm. Houses houses are too comfortable for family. Could you repeat again, please? Houses houses are too comfortable for family. Okay. Mm. It's okay. That's a good example, guys. Yes. But <laughs> Ahí viene el but. Ese es but. un buen ejemplo en cuanto a, a la estructura, pero sin embargo, cuando nosotros ocupamos to, es que es más de lo que necesitamos. En esta, en esta parte, ¿verdad? Cuando va al final, tiene otro significado. Aquí tú estás diciendo, mm. las casas son demasiado cómodas para la familia. Oh. Que, Puchica, mm. eh, muy cómodo. No, hombre, vámonos de aquí. Vámonos a algo más incómodo. No, okay. Right. Okay, okay. Entonces ese tú tiene un negative meaning, pero la estructura está muy bien. Continue, guys. Okay. Let me okay. check another group. Thank, Thank you, you, teacher. You're welcome. Maybe. So, no, how are you doing, guys? It's, it's incorrect. Cars, hose. Much money than motorcycle? Cars cost. Which is the one you're using? What structure are you using? Uh, the evaluation with nouns. Uh huh. With other verbs. All right, good. Say it again, please. Cars cost too much money than motorcycle. Oh, mm -mm. ahí déjelo. Está excelente, pero hasta ahí déjelo. Houses, I'm sorry, cars cost too much money. Ahí muere. Ah, ok. Si usted se fija acá, no estamos comparando. Ah, because it's with nouns. Yes, and it's an evaluation. Yes, las, yes. Las comparisons están abajo. Ahí yes, sí yes, podríamos yes. poner. But good, good, good. Give it a try. Okay. Another. Yeah, yeah. Give me another one with this structure, the same structure. Ah, okay. Uh, maybe a uh, motorcycle, for example, is mm -hmm. expensive. Uh, cost too uh, much expensive. Motorcycles cost too much money. Ah, uh, no expensive. No expensive. Vaya, es que si usted quiere, quisiera decir eso, vamos a ocupar el verbo ah, el verbo to be. Como usted quiere decir, las motos son muy ah, caras, por ejemplo. Ya, 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 ya. ya vamos ya. al vecino de la par. Uh -huh, es la uh -huh. segunda de abajo. Motorcycles uh -huh. are, are too expensive. expensive. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok. Continúe. Maybe your turn. I have one uh, motorcycle are just as safe as cars. As cars. Good, good example. I don't oh. believe you, but <laughs> good example. <laughs> yeah, I have both. I said the same. I, motor I have both, a motorcycle and a car, and uh, uh, I don't think so, but, <laughs> but great example grammatically. Okay. In this, in this case, motorcycles aren't as safe as a car. Yes, good. Yes, excellent. That's another great example. Mm -hmm. All right. I see you're doing great. Let me go ahead and check the last group. Good job, guys. Okay, thank you. David, your turn. Um, I Teacher, Hello. what's up, teacher. guys? How are you doing? Yes, finish, finish our examples. <laughs> two examples for Ingmar and two examples for me. Okay, for all of them? Oh, oh, oh me is oh. the teacher right now. <laughs> okay. 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 One of, 
one of my example is a puzzle has as many parts as crossword puzzle. Mm, let me see, say it again. <laughs> puzzle has as many parts as crossword puzzle. Ah, puzzles. Puzzle, yes, yes. Ah, okay. This, this pronouns. <laughs> okay. Pronunciation for this word. Puzzles have as many as many cards. As ma as many parts as crosswords. Oh, as many parts as crosswords. All right, nice, Omi. Good example. Uh, pronunciation was a little bit difficult to understand at the beginning, but now I got it. Great job with the structure. Now let's make sure that that. Uh, yeah, pronunciation comes with practice. Don't worry about it. Grammatically, you're right. You're correct. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, it's your turn, Imar. Your example. For okay. <laughs> Tr trucks are too big uh, for cars. Mm, trucks are too big for cars. Los camiones son demasiado grandes para los carros. Como así. Yes. No. I mean, grammatically, <laughs> grammatically <laughs> is correct, but but the the idea it's a the little idea. bit. It's different. Aha. Uh -huh. Or the highway is okay. The highway is too big uh, for bicycle. Uh, let's go ahead and change it. Too big? Nah. It's, no importa, o sea, es grande y mejor para la bicicleta, más espacio. But you can use uh, dangerous, perhaps. Highways yeah, are too dangerous for motorcycles. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Another one. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Myself, uh, uh, I don't as comfortable mm -hmm. as a uh, share. Mm. Mis sillones no son tan cómodos ah, como una silla. Excuse me, it's al revés. Uh -huh, it's backwards. Uh -huh. the, sh the share are, are in as. Así es. Chairs. Uh -huh. Chairs are in as uh, comfortable as uh, sofa. There you go. Ahí está. Good, Ahí Good está. teacher. Thank you. Uh -huh. Applause You're for welcome. me. Nice. Nice, nice. Applause for you. All right. So let's go back to the main road, to the main room. Thank okay. you, guys. Good job. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to meet you, Omi. Nice to meet you, Imar. Same. Hey guys, welcome back. So, question, don't lie to me, all right? Was it difficult? Was it confusing? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so yes. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. You're going to have Thursday. No, today is Thursday. You're going to have Friday, mm. Saturday, and Sunday to practice. Okay. Right. Why I will try. This is very, very useful. This topic, I mean, every topic is useful, but you can use it a lot, okay? Because normally you compare when you buy, when you talk to a friend, you always compare, all right? Um, so let me, let me give you a few more examples, all right? Give me a second. Give me a second. All right, so as you were as you were working with this structure, my recommendation will be for you to replace everything, okay? 
traten de reemplazar todo. Si dice apartment, usen cars. Okay. Esta estructura está puesta así de simple, entre comillas, porque es una estructura algo, algo sabrosona, de algo galana. Entonces, necesito que si ahí dice apartments, póngale casa, póngale motos, póngale tortilla, póngale lo que sea. Si dice big, cambien el, este, el adjetivo. No se separen de eso. Hagan unas... Prácticamente tenemos evaluaciones con nouns y con adjetivos. Tenemos comparativos. Ah, oh, perdón, no tengo la cámara. Pensé que tenía la cámara. I'm sorry. So, um, tenemos comparaciones. Comparaciones con adjetivos y con nouns. Vienen dos ejemplos de cada uno, ¿vea? Entonces me van a hacer tres de cada uno. ¿Ok? So, seis, seis. Van a ser un montón, pero es necesario. Y luego tenemos este, comparaciones también con adjetivos y con nouns. Y les dan dos ejemplos cada uno. So, de cada uno de los ejemplos necesito que hagan tres. ¿Los voy a poder revisar todos? I don't think so, porque son un montón. ¿Ok? So, la idea no es revisarlo. La idea es el lunes que vengamos, porque este tema lo vamos a trabajar un poquito más. Oh. Ustedes ya estén un, un poquito más desenvueltos. ¿Ok? Yes. Okay. So guys, thank you very much for your commitment. Lucky for you, you're not going to see me tomorrow. You're going to see me okay. until Monday. <laughs> okay. I see okay. you Monday. So, this thank is Alejandro you. Narbona, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Get out of here. See you Monday. Thank you. Bye. Thank Good you, night. teacher. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.